Yo, how's it going, folks? This is Intangible, and this is going to be my pre-fight prediction to Errol Spence versus Danny Garcia, an upcoming pay-per-view event to be host on the December the 5th, this coming Saturday, uh, between current unified WBC and IBF welterweight champion, and being Errol Spence, and former unified 140-pound champion and former WBC welterweight champion Danny Garcia. Uh, both guys are consensus top six welterweights in the current welterweight division landscape. I have Danny Garcia rated as my number six welterweight. He's obviously a very capable fighter, um, a very experienced fighter, uh, who's been in the ring with numerous world champions over the years. Guys like, of course, a very past it Morales and Zab Judah, but also Amir Khan, Prime Lucas Matisse. Uh, welterweight, you know, he's defeated guys like Guerrero and Samuel Vargas. Um, in his last fight, he defeated Ivan Redcash. Before then, he defeated uh, Adrian Granados. And his two best fights of the welterweight division, he has come up short against the likes of Sean Porter and Keith Thurman. Uh, those two defeated him pretty much by virtue of working them, of outworking them sort of in crucial spots. Um, Danny Garcia seemed to be fighting pretty laxed in a lot of points in those fights, which cost him. So Danny Garcia is not a consensus elite welterweight, considering that all, um, the two best welterweights he's fought, he's come up short, and neither of those fights were ever considered controversial necessarily. Some people thought he did defeat Sean Porter, but I don't really think he defeated Keith Thurman by um, any type of margin that would suggest to me that he's elite, or that he came close to beating him or anything like that. I thought Thurman clearly won. Errol Spence, in his case, is considered an elite welterweight. In fact, he's my current number one welterweight, being that he is the holder of two titles and two claims to the welterweight championship, the WBC and IBF. Um, the IBF belt he won off of Kell Brook a number of years ago in 2017, okay, in Sheffield, and he's also defeated Sean Porter. He also has names like Chris Algieri, uh, Lamont Peterson, etc. on his resume thus far. Uh, also defeated Mikey Garcia last year coming up from lightweight, which he doesn't necessarily receive a lot of credit for, being that Mikey did move up three or two weight classes uh, to fight Errol Spence and challenge him for the belts. So, this fight is a fight in which, before the car crash um, that Errol Spence obviously suffered, I didn't really have too many questions about who I thought would win this fight. But the car accident, being that Errol Spence is coming off a very traumatic situation and something that could potentially be extremely physically draining, uh, and, and the especially facial damage that he took uh, from the incident, this could potentially cost him a fight like this if he does not come in at 100%. If his chin isn't the same, he's fighting a guy in Danny Garcia who has exceptional timing and great power on most, more specifically the left hook. Um, his speed on that shot is much quicker than most of his other shots. He loads up on that shot extremely fast. Um, the left hook that Danny possesses is a shot that he is very dangerous with, especially at mid-range. That's where he caught Amir Khan. Amir Khan was starting to get very greedy. He came out in the fight very aggressive, was fighting in front of Danny Garcia. Seemed like he was starting to overwhelm Danny, but Danny caught him in the fourth round, started timing him, and Amir Khan was pretty much finished. He got dropped a number of other times, but... That was pretty much it for him. Um, Danny Garcia also was just timing. I mean, he looked brilliant against Adrian Granados, but looked honestly almost washed up uh, against Ivan Redcatch. Looks extremely slow. He seemed to have a lot of trouble against Ivan Redcatch's southpaw stance. Um, I do think that there is a certain degree of risk for Errol Spence in this fight, I will say. Assessing both guys' styles, like I mentioned with Danny, he's very good at timing. He's pretty solid on the back foot. He has a decent sort of stiff jab. Um, he's got a nice little pull counter right hand. He's a very good counter puncher in totality. The left hook is the shot he possesses most power in. Um, defensively, he relies quite a, quite a bit on blocking shots with his guard and pulling back into his offense and sort of pull countering you uh, with both hands. Um... He relies on a. He, he relies on his opponents oftentimes standing in front of him. His biggest weakness, in my opinion, is, is his front foot game, his inability to cut the ring off, and his uh, fighting in a mobile pocket. Because he not only does he have slow feet, he has poor footwork on the front foot, where he drags his back feet. Um, his he, he's pretty flat-footed. 
um, he has problems cutting angles. And because of the fact that, the fact that he likes to sit stationary, he doesn't really fight near the perimeter of the ring. He likes to stand in the center. He's has a lot of problems following guys around the perimeter, around the circumference of the ring. So, um, Danny, at least in his favor, at least luckily for him, he is fighting a guy in Errol Spence who is a come-forward fighter for the most part. Now, Errol Spence is capable of boxing, <clears throat> but when he did box, he was against Mikey Garcia, and that was a Mikey who was much shorter than him, and it was much easier for Errol Spence to use his extension against a guy like a, um, against a guy like a Mikey Garcia, who really just had trouble getting past his jab, wouldn't get past his jab, was worried about what was coming back, and he fought very subdued for all 12 rounds. But Spence is a guy who likes to come forward. I think he does have a good jab, uh, not only just a good jab in terms of, in terms of controlling the distance at long range. I feel like it's best when he uses that uses it as a sort of proactive weapon. Um, he's very good at using it to get his opponent against the ropes. Now Sean Porter was able to take away uh, Errol Spence's jab for the most part when in their encounter. But the reason why I thought Errol Spence won, and the reason why he won in the judges' eyes, was because he was much better, in my opinion, than uh, Sean Porter in one specific aspect, which is his punch accuracy. Errol Spence is a very tame, very calm fighter inside the ring. Um, he's very relaxed and mentally tough. He knows how to stick to a specific game plan, and he's not worried about just banking in rounds constantly. He's what he is is a guy who's going to use he's he's going to use his body attack and he's going to use his jab as sort of a decoy for you, and he's going to try to incrementally break you down. He fights most of his fights in a pretty similar fashion. Against Porter, he tried to smother Porter's offense, get up close, and really um, beat him by virtue of landing cleaner shots and being more accurate up close. And that was the same thing with Brook. Wear Brook down, take away his stamina, and then stop him late. Um, his power is something that gets stronger as the fight goes on, as he's someone who likes to um, he, he's someone who, he's not particularly a huge one-punch knockout artist, as some people would suggest. He's a person who, like I said, relies on using a lot of decoys and sort of tactics to wear you down and take advantage of what is most of the time his strength in mental strength and physical conditioning over his opponents, um, which he's had over pretty much all of his opponents throughout his career. His physical conditioning is phenomenal. He punches at a very high, uh, very high volume. Against Sean Porter, he threw over a thousand punches. Against Mikey Garcia, he threw over seven hundred punches. Uh, no, against Mikey Garcia, he threw over a thousand punches. Against Sean Porter, he threw over seven hundred punches. And against Lamont Peterson, I believe he, th against Kell Brook, he threw over uh, six hundred punches. Against Lamont Peterson, he threw over four hundred punches in what was a fight that lasted six, seven rounds. Um, that is a advantage that he's going to have over Danny Garcia. However, with his come forward nature, he's going to be presenting opportunities to Danny Garcia that probably wasn't there against Ivan Redcatch, being that Ivan Redcatch also fought a dude unlike Danny. Spence is not really a counter puncher like that. He's more of a leader. So, um, that sort of suits what Danny Garcia is going to like to do, which is counter punching. Now, the reason why, even though this seems like a stylistic, this seems like a tough stylistic clash for Spence. Is part of the reason I think Spence should win comfortably, assuming he's 100%, which is the assumption I'm making in this prediction video, is that Danny Garcia is not going to be able to beat Spence from long range. If Spence decides to move and uh, fight off his jab like he did against Mikey, even if he's not the best at it, uh, Danny struggles with movement so much, um, to the point to where Danny, I don't think, is going to beat him in a fight like that, and he's going to be forced to lead in a situation like that, um, he's going to present opportunities for Spence to use the step back left hand, which he uses very well. Uh, and if Spence fights close up, um, like all the way inside, not necessarily uh, fighting exclusively for mid range, which is where Danny Garcia is going to have his opportunities, Danny Garcia becomes timid on the left hook. When he was in clinches with Keith Thurman, you especially noticed there. 
there was a lot of times, a lot of instances, where if he had shortened up the left hook, if he didn't need the distance uh, to be able to get the power on his left hook, he probably would have thrown it with uh, better... Um, he probably th would have thrown it with more commitment up close, but he didn't do so against uh, Keith Thurman. He was much more hesitant to do so when he was up close. And if Spence does the same, but stays up close, is able to use the clinch um, effectively, that should be able to mitigate Danny Garcia's offense and should prevent his activity anyways aside from inside of clinches. However, where Danny Garcia is, the threat is at mid-range. If it's Errol Spence, and he does tend to do this, where he stands at mid-range, um, gets in pretty close, but not all the way inside, and keeps his head on the center line, that is where Danny can capitalize. And if Danny lands his left hook, that's... Depending on, where, depending on the state of Errol Spence, that might, be fight, that might be the end of the fight. However, if Spence's chin is like it usually is, I think he should survive the onslaught because... Let's be real. Let's look at the guys Danny Garcia has knocked out at 147 pounds. Adrian Granados. He didn't actually. He dropped him once, but um, he didn't actually uh, stop. He stopped him on his feet. And Adrian Granados is a natural 140 pounder. He stopped Sammy Vargas. He didn't stop um, Robert Guerrero. He didn't stop Ivan Redcatch. He didn't really seem to hurt um, Keith Thurman and Sean Porter visibly that much. And overall, I don't really think his power is as much of a threat at this weight class as it was as 147 pounds. I don't know if it's carried up enough. I don't know whether it's the fact that he's fighting bigger guys or his, some of his stylistic flaws um, have been showcased a bit more. And his craft, som in, sometimes lacking in certain areas, is preventing him from being able... I think it's a combination of all different things. But I don't think his power is as much of a threat here. But Spence does need to be careful, especially when he's um, coming in off of his entry. I think what Spence needs to do is lean over to his left um, to get away from the trajectory. And he does this a lot where he does lean over to his left, get away from the trajectory of the left hand. Being that he's a southpaw, when he does bend his knees, his body naturally will rotate over to the left. So I think that should be something he tries to do. Lean over to your left, get away, and sort of go to the outside of the left hook trajectory and get in up close. And if he's able to do that, or just stand at range, I think Spence should win comfortably on points in an 8-4 to 9-3 type of a fight. If Danny does catch him at mid-range, that, that could be the end of the fight. And that's what Danny needs to do. Danny needs to try to time him coming forward, and he needs to stay active on his feet going backwards. His feet going backwards aren't bad, it's when he's coming forwards, where his feet tend to get exposed. But when he's moving backwards, he needs to give Spence um, quite a bit of room. And he needs to capitalize on the spacing that he gives himself. Um, and if that ends up happening, expect for Spence to be a bit more um, subdued and a little bit more circumspect maybe early on. I think it's going to be a bit cagey early on where Spence is going to try to use his jab coming in. I think he's going to try to box early, step in later on in the fight. Spence wins. Unanimous decision. Have a good one.